Good evening, everyone. How are you? I can't hear you, but I'm just um, assuming that you're doing fine. <laughs> and if you're not, then I pray that through the greatness of the name and the blood of Jesus, that you'll find uh, health in your body, peace in your mind, and uh, also victory in your spirit over all things in Jesus' name. We're going to talk a little bit about the, the blood of the lamb this evening. Um, I thought it was going to be very quick, and then I'm finding out that my notes have gone just kind of wacky on me here. Um, I, I may have to kind of pause and start again several times because I have to, to narrow this down so it doesn't take three days to do this. Um, I used all the scriptures, which are, I, well, I, I have to read them because I love them, but, um, there's just so many things that, that we need to, to, I'm not sure if I know how to say it per se. I just know we need we need not to just skip over it like we know it. Um, we've got uh, some powerful enemies in these last days from every venue and every place. And although it may seem like these things don't apply, this is where our life, where our light comes from. We can't just uh, do the church thing and think that that's it. Um, we have to do the life um, through the blood of the Lamb, uh, not just um, doing things bent on our minds, but having our minds renewed so that our spirits and the application of the blood of the Lamb can work with power, not only in our lives, but in this the re earthly realm that we're in that the things that, that God has done in Christ Jesus actually are not just a religious activity that secure our place in heaven, but they actually become uh, powerfully valid in every place in our lives. And I know sometimes that, that church people get tired of this, but forgive us, Lord, that we get tired of this. Forgive us that we think, think that we can just live any old way and think that because we seem to have gotten by with it that if there is something not covered by the blood of the lamb not believed and acted on in faith because this just it says it, without faith it's impossible to please god so faith is very active in the activity of not just our initial salvation, but our continually growing in the spirit and in, in the life of, of Jesus Christ, because that's where we were hid in Christ before the foundations of the world. But now we have the opportunity to live that outright and to be so thankful that we don't want to compromise um, anything that he has meant in us or in the lives of others because we kind of do things lackadaisically or I don't know the word that comes to me doesn't sound very pretty but it's sloppily um, so anyway uh, I think we're going to come from here I was going to come from several different angles but I'm not going to go there and maybe that God will pick that up I know they were important to be reminded of but I believe that um, we're going to do this tonight first. We won't probably get be too long with it. Although, I'll tell you the truth. I was just looking up things about the blood of Jesus and look at all of that. <laughs> I was looking at um, three particular books. And I think each one of them have, have valid things that not only speak, but speak differently. This book right here, and I, and I don't have down here the, the one by Kenneth Hagin, um, and, and there's, there's several others that I have, some older ones that are, oh my goodness, they're such in, they're so old, they're kind of crumbly, but I didn't bring those out, although I might, because I think probably we'll be referencing to these um just simply because we need to know 
not just what time it is and all that sort of stuff, but we need to know how we need to live, how we need to speak, yes, but what we must not just believe somewhere up there, but allow the power of the blood of Jesus. I, I looked at something today and I thought, well, I'm just going to say it. I, I may not have it all straight, but I looked at how important the activity of the blood is with our faith. Um, it's not just learning something about the blood, what's been done for us, but to realize that the blood is, is flowing in us is a part that activates our faith and keeps our faith growing and and uh, powerfully in in all the things that we have available to us we want to pray in the name of jesus but when we pray in the name of jesus we, there must be such honor and 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 realizing the activity of the blood even in our speaking our speech and our believing to recognize how powerful these things are and how needed they are and how I even I found myself today in the midst of this saying Lord saying I'm sorry just seems so little I said forgive me I need to apply this blood in some of the ways that, that I've been thinking some of the ways that I've been not overtly dealing, but just not inwardly and, um, praising and speaking to you and giving you honor for what you have done um, in Christ and Holy Spirit. We we do these things, but yet we, we hinder your great power within us because we get find ourselves in places that where we just think that, oh, well, I've gotten by with this this long and I know God understands but but no if it, it if it compromises if it goes against the word of God then it diminishes rather than that just being covering it because it, it diminishes the fullness of God's life that he wants to replace our ways with so that our spirit can prevail even in our souls and in our which involves our minds in our thinking uh, in our mouths that where our mouths get to speaking things that are unbelief and and unkind and don't uh, have the power to do things not just in our lives personally or in the lives of those we know or our churches but in over the whole world when we pray and over these things that are coming upon nations, uh, we don't realize sometimes that the lives of other men and women, boys and girls, babies, are involved with how we believe God and where our praise is sanctified in the blood of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Father, I just pray as I get started, and I don't know that I'll get very far because of the time, but I bless you. Thank you for Jesus. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're here in, in us. I pray that we'll not hinder you. I pray that we will uh, be willing to confess when we sin and not just find another way to do it, but find your the power of faith working with your blood to cleanse us from all unrighteousness in our thinking, in our dealings, in things that we do, in our attitudes toward people, even those we love. Father, we thank you. I want, we know that the world is nearing its completion and has to be dealt with. We understand, oh God, that nations are in jeopardy right now. Help us, Lord God, to lay aside all those wrong teachings that we've heard or attitudes we have, the things that were just kind of like byword, slanderous things that we heard growing up about um, Jewish people or about Indian, Native American Indians and about other countries, Lord God. Father Jesus, in Jesus, your, his blood cleansed in every stain, for every tribe and every nation, Lord God, everything that you have given birth to, it's not an accident, Lord. 
you've known it and you've known them and provided for them. Let us not be haphazard in the way we think or the way we deal. Sanctify us anew today as we just study your word in these matters. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Out of a book called um, The Authority of the Believer, which is a, com a, a companion book to me for many of them. Like I said, I only brought technically three books other than the Bible here and some notes and things that, that God had given me that I've been working on, but just never have felt I had the right approach. So I'm just going, that's why I surrendered this to God to, to just because I know time is an effort and I don't want to overtake your time, but I also don't want to not give us all because maybe these are things that are for me. You may all be all fine with him, but pray for me. Hallelujah. But um, this one book that I'm going to, to read from, uh, not read from, but just use some guidelines that I, that I came to when I, begin to look up these scriptures. Uh, this book is, um, it, it, it could be, like I said, the companion book is, is, a, is this book is called The Authority of the Believer, John McMillan. You can see that. Uh, the other one that I have, and I've studied from this for, for years, um, but I also studied from uh, Billy Brim's book called The Blood and the Glory. Eh, one hand is holding this up very well here. Blood and Glory by Billy Brim. I had a, a, a book which I, it kind of jolted me when I began to look at it. I realized that, oh my goodness, some of these things I had known per se, but not in their fullness. Um, and um uh, it's called The Power of the Blood. Mary Baxter is one of the early people in my life that I had um, been taken to heaven. And uh, she was very active, I think, probably in the 60s, maybe 70s also. Uh, and then the foreword of it is done by Dr. T.L. Lowry, who I believe, I might be real mistaken about this unless it says right here. I believe that he, yes, he was from Cleveland, Tennessee, which gives me the kind of the idea he might have been out of the um, denomination of the, the Church of God. Um, and it's, uh, it, yeah, it was first, yeah, the power of the blood. It's, it's a combination of, of, her testimonies from her her visitations of going to heaven and also um, out of his ministry of um, and it's called healing for your spirit soul and body and it was in this place when I just I actually looked at that and I thought spirit soul and body well yeah 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 I know that but as I began to look at it I began to see an activity of the blood in our spirit that I I don't know that I have it all put together but I could see that God was just showing me something just a little deeper a little broader uh, perhaps some things that might might uh, quicken the process of our, our being able to change uh, in the areas of our mind and our emotions <clears throat> so okay here we go I want to just uh, to to read first of all from uh, this John A. McMillan book. I didn't realize um, his he was born in 1873. He passed away in 1956. So um, these actually are, are classic writings that I've been reading from all this time, and I could I can understand now. I can kind of see a. a what I was hearing and seeing how it fit with things that I grew up with. Um, I was born in 1943, so um, 
my brother wasn't very old, but I was <laughs> when this book came out. It's not one that I was familiar with. This came out, um, I think, during Kenneth Hagin's ministry, his teachings, a lot of these things. And then Kenneth Copeland, of course, was right on his heels, too. And then some of the others, then, um, like Jerry Savelle and... Um, in particular, those are I remember them in particular because they they traveled somewhat with them, and then of course Billy Brim was also in that area. She has such a very interesting and powerful uh, activity in the Lord that we don't realize. That sometimes we only see her, but she has a a very accredited um, Bible school, and uh, even through the doctorate degree. So. So she has, she just has some wonderful things, but she did a lot of traveling in her early years with a lot of people that sometimes, like Lynn Hammond, um, and of course her sister, her twin sister, twin sister passed away several years now. Um, and of course all of them, uh, Lynn's husband, all of them were active in the early, what we would call the charismatic movement, all those sort of things, uh, when full gospel businessmen entered into these things. Of course, Nancy Dufresne, her husband, um, Ed Dufresne, was involved in those things too, though he's, he has passed away now. She's a tremendous teacher uh, in these in these times, just just really great depth and and um, also um, has has some of the gifts that were in Ed were passed uh, through the spirit to her and then God had his own for her too as well so she has uh, an activity of healing in her ministry of active uh, activity of healing in her ministry so there's a lot of people out there still today but these some of these of course Billy Brim is still there too <laughs> um, I can't remember if she's older than me or I'm older than her but whatever it is it doesn't matter she's she has she has blessed the world in all kinds of places she's very involved in Israel she has um, uh, like CBN and others all of them are 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 in Israel in these times with television ministries and reports and reporters that that are on the scene but Reverend McMillan um, he was a, a particular his book is is in particular about spiritual warfare um, he talks a lot to intercessors um, and and talks about the encounters of with darkness that the believer um, has authority over and 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 both Billy Brim and him look into the the context of some of these things. We just kind of take the armor as almost Sunday Sunday schoolish now, and then of course with the now that's involved things. So there are many good ministries. I mean, I don't mean that, but there are things that somehow in overall the church in general sometimes gets not active in and i think those are places that god would like for us to individually uh, hear from him but also know even in our praying we're praying for some of these situations and circumstances that are going on right now even in the activities uh, i realize that sometimes we got divided at out about certain things uh, and that's just nothing more than the enemy. If God was for someone, he did not be for someone, or he would have told us. So we don't make those judgments. We don't realize what nations individually and collectively um, they have to go through because of things that happened. We don't even understand that some of the things happening in the United States right now, which are very diabolical, and they're literally closing the door to Christianity in many places. So these things, we don't realize that we're under the effect of disobediences, even within the church, even, you know, in places of leadership in our nation, things like this. So we've got to, to come to a place where we're willing to be before God and say, God, I don't want to just go on with things thinking, oh, the world's going to, Jesus is going to come, the world is going to come, oh, there's going to be this, oh, there's going to be that. 
and I'm living from that point. I'm just living out of out of out of a surface fear. What I'm troubled with, uh, as if we didn't have the spiritual fortitude and the spiritual power to receive from. And it doesn't matter if we've not done our best over the years. Let's get into it now. Let's get into it now. Let's not. You know, I, I realize there's places where we're churches have failed ministers have failed you know i understand that i understand it more so than you than a lot of people understand long before um i came to new england i understand those things i've worked been with that i've had to go through those things growing up as a child i've had to grow up with accusations from my own, in my own family line that were not true but they were they were still there but also this the things that have happened here in in where we are right now uh we have to realize that that god isn't diminished by what the enemy comes up with we're we're the light here and if our light goes out then then those things that were counted unto us to be to be blessed to to participate in the salvation and the in the bringing to life and to bring miracles in people's lives through christ through the power of the holy ghost these things are i don't know how else to say and i'm going to just talk right out to you this way i'm not trying to explain everything and make a the words we're going to get to here in the word of god should be the things that convict us convince us um and also know that because they're there as long as they're still there and, and, and the Lord hasn't come, then we still have a place to repent. And that shouldn't be a shame to us. That should be to his glory that we have heard him and believed his report and not the things in our lives that have torn us down or kept us bound up or whatever. Yes, those things need to be dealt with too. But hallelujah, you don't do it by by getting down on god <laughs> you get there in him and let the blood of jesus let the blood of jesus let the glory of god in christ and the blood of jesus in us and the glory that's in us and offered that we can live in it right now hallelujah to be the things that turn our our thinking around and if we're afraid if fear makes us say oh what if somebody finds us out hallelujah <laughs> so if they find it out for you or me then they're going to see how how wonderful god is how powerful god is and that's what we should know hallelujah glory to god i just want to tell you that mcmillan was born in 1873 he passed away in 1956 but his his writings such as are in this book in in particular on spiritual warfare uh, are are still very valid and very informative and with the things that have been god has opened up since since that time and they've been mighty we've lived through some of these things many of you came to christ in those times as so did i i mean i was already born again but born again is one thing but coming up and growing up and and following loving the word of god the word of god was just beginning to take some places here that made this book, the writing of this book, the publishing even of this book, to be very timely for the for the 50s and 60s, 70s, and on right on through where we are in uh, 2024. So um, he was a, can, a Canadian man. Um, he was a missionary in China, um, in su southern China and uh he was he was ordained into the ministry while he was in the in china in the field of ministry there so he had he has a, had a lot of spare experience there he was also in the philippines um uh, i believe i'm not sure when they returned back to when he returned back to the united states it might have been, have been in the 30s um uh so let me just see there was one one statement i think i well let me just let me just pull a few things from here and then i'll go to my notes 
it says the, the in the prefaces of this um he he had written um he, well I, I guess some of those denominations you wouldn't remember anyway so I'll mention them at this point the rapidly approaching end of the age and remember this book itself was written uh, excuse me I didn't think to look at that it's a little they put them out a little differently than they do now <laughs> um, this is put again into publication um, by Billy Brim, actually. I hadn't even realized this. It was revised in 2015 and put back in publication, but in its origin, original areas, it was um, originally pu published as a series of articles in 1932. Why does this matter? I don't know. <laughs> but sometimes it does to know that, that God is moving and working in people um, from a long time before. Um, so it was also published in 1981, 1997, and then 2007. And then Billy Brim re uh, brought it out and published it again in 2015. It's sometimes important for us to realize the foundations that all of us have had. I have a lot of books here that are that are really old. <laughs> Some of them Jewish uh, history books and things of this nature. Even my grandfather's writings. I don't have the ones that were not published, but um, I think they they got past me ever seeing them. But um, I think they're in the Pentecostal Holiness Church archives at this point which um which is fine i got to see them growing up i saw them in their little onion skin i don't know if you the typing paper they used to use was called onion skin paper it was thin and of course uh, most typewriters <laughs> it didn't take much uh it took a lot of muscle to get those things down and and they were all off had a strange feel to them when you would read them, but I did see some of them as I was coming into the charismatic movement and, and had some access to things that my mother had. I, why that thing keeps coming on, but it does, so I'll just turn it right off again. You probably couldn't see it. It was for me to see my computer talking to me. <clears throat> it says there are a few subjects relating to the Christian life concerning which there is so little exact knowledge as that of the authority of the believer, isn't it? And like I said, he, this was first published in 35, did I say? Um, and to realize that here was this term, the authority of the believer. And most of like the time that, that I was, you can see then it was in, influenced um, in the Kenneth Hagin ministry, Kenneth Copeland, all of those. Who, who were working in those times when this was in Billy Brim herself and others. <clears throat> That's a familiar term to us, the authority of the believer, and we think it's like almost, um, but it, it's something that God's wanted us to know for a long time, and he's made sure that it's come into, into this era and this age, and men and women who who write in these areas use this term and have and the Holy Spirit has just what we can see in this book is is wonderful but but the Holy Spirit just works when we apply these things and God gets in there and and, and inspires other people to write but people get in there to study and it's that this subject is is just so expanded spiritually expanded um, and that means faith. Um, uh, great faith accompanies these things when when we will apply ourselves well I'm just not this or I'm not that you're a child of God through the Lord the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ you are a believer and you have authority you have places not for you to wield it over people but to wield it to help people <laughs> to to 
release the powers of the of the darkness with the power of of the light in of Jesus who is the light who is this called the word of God that they will be released not not in healing yes all these kinds of things but we released in our in our in our spirits so that our soul and our minds don't get so bogged down in places where that we we don't walk wisely with God and we don't ha have the confidence and the faith that is given to us and sometimes even the faith that was given to us to to believe to become Christians gets so interfered with by the activity of the enemy and the ways of people and in the ways of our own our own souls that don't get renewed they don't get restored into the places of kingdom activity and kingdom living so it's it's very important hallelujah that we understand that we have an authority it isn't to make us big and grand and idios, and we don't use it to get a name. We have a name that's above every name. My name, your name, hallelujah. And in that name, there is an authority when our believing is set there and not easily shaken. It doesn't mean it can't be shaken, but we can we can dive into these things we can we can let the grounding of these things cause us to um not just individually be able to get things or be wealthy and what there's nothing wrong with that or to get healed there's absolutely nothing but but to think that that those are accomplishments by just us they're by us in christ us in the Holy Spirit, us in the Word of God. It's the things we're working with heaven. We're working with the kingdom of God. We're working in these last days for the things that will be victory, that will manifest the victory in this these ages and in this era, hallelujah, and in this realm, hallelujah. Um, I just wanted to read this part talking about the authority of the believer. It's not because such authority is the property of only a few elect souls. On the contrary, it's the possession of every true child of God. It is one of the all things received in Christ. Its reception dates from the soul's contact with Calvary. This is an old time language, but love it. <laughs> At Calvary. Probably because of the extreme importance of a correct understanding of its privileges and responsibilities, and because of the power which they confer on a militant believer, that means I'm in the Lord's army. <laughs> the enemy has especially sought to hold back this knowledge from God's people. He's been successful through the employment of blinding tactics, which he has found effective in the case of the lost or of those who believe not. And you could read in Second Corinthians, I didn't pull this one out, but let me just quickly go to it. Second Corinthians chapter four of course the book I have I hear is is a new bible <laughs> they don't always want to just unfold where you put them uh, this is an, an amplified bible too in case you don't recognize the language chapter four second corinthians chapter four verses three and four it says but even if our gospel the glad tidings also be hidden obscured and covered up with a veil that hinders the knowledge of God. Well, that said what I was trying to say while ago much better. <laughs> it is hidden only to those who are perishing and obscured only to those who are spiritually dying and veiled to those who are 
who are who are lost. Verse four says, "For the God of this world has blinded the unbelievers' minds, that they should not discern the truth." I want to just add something here too. Remember, it says the way it's the amplified puts it: "It's blinded the unbelievers' minds." Anytime we can, we fall into these categories, even though we have believed in Christ, have been born again, and are baptized in the Holy Spirit, all those things, the blood of Jesus, we claim the blood of Jesus has forgiven our sins, we are born again, all of these things. But the Satan intends to try to get us blind or get us uh, confused or angry or disappointed all those kinds of things so that we would not continue to find out not just reasons but to find out the truth of things so we can we can be corrected in the way we believe or the way we deal through through a relationship in Christ Jesus with the Holy Spirit in the word of God hallelujah the word of God is important. The enemy, you know, he can him haul like he's going to pass it by. But when we stand with the truth, believing it and trusting it and not falling under all his onslaughts, hallelujah, God wins and the enemy has to remain defeated. He has already lost, but sometimes he makes us act like he's, he's not defeated, but he is. So anyway, um, for the God of this world has blinded the unbelievers' minds, and he tries to confuse the believers, that they should not discern the truth, preventing them from seeing the illuminating light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image and the likeness of God. And then <clears throat> the writer of the, the preface goes on to say, For it is strangely true that although its principles are set forth in a definite way in the epistle to the Ephesians, which we're going to look at a little bit today. Um, or maybe not today, but next time. I don't know how far we'll get if I don't stop this going back and forth. Um, there is a very, uh, let me just start this sentence again. It is strangely true that although its principles are set forth in a definite way in the epistle to the Ephesians, and that narrows it down to some things that can defeat these kinds of attitudes and things and the way the enemy wants to trap us or cause us to not believe or to be discouraged. There is very, a very little grasp of them by the majority of even spiritual believers. That there is such authority is recognized, but it is confounded with other aspects of the life of faith and thereby loses its distinctive value and power. Every doctrine of scripture, while correlated closely with others of the same class, has features peculiar to itself. You know, this is, God is so good. We, hallelujah, we just need to love God and quit arguing <laughs> about, uh, or falling for the fact that we just can't get it. It's too hard. Holy Spirit, forgive us. Jesus, you were, you were very clear in what you set forth to do. And Father, you did it. <laughs> Hallelujah. We praise you, great God. <clears throat> we do have to realize that the things that we have in the Word of God and all the things that are not just available to us, but are readily accessible by our spirits, in our minds, in our emotions, our attitudes, as well as for our physical bodies. Hmm. 
when we begin to see how to hold these things in right relationship and don't let the enemy or anybody else confuse us or try to bring us some different doctrine, that there can be a great benefit to us to understand what the authority of the believer means and then to humble ourselves. This is me speaking, to humble ourselves to learn how to walk and learn how to walk in these and then walk that way and realize we're going to, the enemy is going to fight us different ways at different times, but God has provided things in every situation that we can trust. And the one thing that we know we can trust, we can trust what has been done for us in Christ Jesus. We can trust the blood of Jesus. We can trust the word himself who became flesh and was crucified and, and died and was buried and went to hell and defeated the enemy with these very things in himself, in hell, and that God was then able to raise him from the dead, a conqueror and a victor, and Satan, a defeated foe who just had a loud mouth that still had a period of time to be able to speak, but that that the Bible said that, that what Jesus has done and what the Word of God declares that he is and that he spoke and that he did and that he lived and that he died and that he raised again because he was not able, Satan was not able to conquer. Hallelujah. <laughs> what God had done and said, he had to bow. Hallelujah, to realize that these things are not just available to us. We can, we can grow and live, and we can be changed. Hallelujah, the things that might the enemy might or we ourselves might think that we can never be forgiven of. Don't ask Jesus to come and die again. He already did it. He, it is forgivable. We may have to change. And we may have to stop doing some things. We may have to, to stop giving excuses that the, the, the demons and everything else that try to tempt us in things. But hallelujah, God is merciful and great and gracious. Hallelujah. We have light and we can, it does overpower the darkness. And grace does overcome sin. Hallelujah. Praise God. Whew. The constitution and laws of spirit, the spiritual world are perfectly orderly and logical, and they must be adhered to and carefully obeyed if the desired and promised result is to be fully gained over immediately, but also then then be active to, to change all kinds of areas that our, our walk with Christ has in, in, the, in the makings. Um, <clears throat> this man wanted to, us to understand this, and I believe that it's something we do need to understand. In making this statement, it's not intended to suggest that a logical and intellectual, an intellect mind can of itself grasp spiritual values or gain possession of spiritual blessings. Were that possible, the deepest phases of the Christian life would be in the would be the possession of the most intellectual. But it isn't just our intellect. We have to know, we have to work, but we have to have a spiritual relationship with God. We have to be born again. We, we need to have the activity of the Holy Spirit working in our lives and come to the fullness of things. The Word of God has to be to us alive and full of power. It isn't just a book or just a, a book to, grow, to get stories of what happened in the past and try to equate them or make them equal to what we go through. No, every Word of God is God-breathed. It's alive and full of power. It has power. It has the life of God in it. It is there's more truth that the Holy Spirit. 
that's one of the Holy Spirit breathes on these on the Word of God. He breathes it in us and to us and for us so that we can see the greatness that unfolds in this. What Jesus did on the cross is so powerful and so involved and so deep and reaches so far. We used to sing in, in church, we still do, um, in, in a chorus form perhaps, that the, the blood will never lose its power. <laughs> Another church hymnal song was, there's power in the blood, power in the blood, wonder-working power of the blood of the Lamb. And it's still working wonders. It isn't something you just get saved, you just get healed once, or you get your 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 mind through the word of God and the blood of Jesus begins to be sanctified from its old way of thinking. We do have to change, <laughs> but that's okay. We don't lose anything. There used to be a, a thing, especially in the era that I grew up in, you, when you became born again or Pentecostal, that you had you couldn't be rich, you, you couldn't wear fine clothes, uh, that you were always going to be poor. Well, that was proven to be a lie and certainly is even more so today but at the same time that cannot be our pursuit but it is a, a possession of hallelujah that of when we know how to believe that the the faith of god hallelujah that begins to exercises in exercise in all places of our lives and our relationships hallelujah things that we just think could never be repaired they can be and if they don't get repaired to our personal satisfaction if they get repaired so that the other party we're talking about or ourselves if we've held things against people can still reap the reward of our salvation and that the activity of the blood of christ and the healing power that's in that blood hallelujah praise god Oh, we have to understand, too, that this isn't a, just an intellectual thing. It goes beyond your intellect. The mind is good. Our minds need to be schooled, all these things, but they need to be renewed in the by the blood of the, of the Lamb. They need to be renewed in the Word of God. They need to be renewed into the things the Spirit is speaking. Our spirit being made alive in Christ Jesus is supposed to, to gain the ascendancy over these things that we have thought <clears throat> uh, make us uh, scholarly or whatever it is. There's nothing wrong with being scholarly, but without the power of God, it's limited. It can do some things, but it's limited, and it can't go the distance that we need to be going in these days right now. <clears throat> the wisdom of the wise is destroyed, like the, the Bible says, um, when we want to assert it from the, from the area of the mind rather than from the wisdom of God. Uh, we have to under, thank God that there is an inner spiritual understanding conferred through and the enlightenment of that same spirit which enables as the quote is from 1 Corinthians 1.27, the foolish things of the world it enables us who seem to be, and the things that God would use that seem foolish to the wise will be the things that establish the power of God. Um, so, There's, there's some places that, that he deals with here which are necessary to be with, but I'm not going to, to speak those at this point. Um, <clears throat> we have to understand that, especially um, in the area of the Holy Spirit, that there are all there there's so many act so much activity with the infilling of the holy spirit and the working of the holy spirit with the word of god and with the with the gifts of god through the spirit and that isn't just from the holy spirit it's to our that work in our spirits hallelujah, hallelujah as our spirits are made alive in christ jesus <clears throat> through that blood we've been restored back in that spirit comes alive so there's um there's an element of relationship with god and and uh with who god is and who he made us to be that really is um 
sometimes we don't realize we just think we're just the same but we're not we've experienced like i said a, a newness because our spirits made new but if all we have ever acted on is by our minds then we don't realize that faith comes through through the spirit it's it will do things in the mind it will school the mind it will cause the mind to be renewed to the activity of god who is the spirit to the activity of the things of god the how that, that sickness can be healed um that's <clears throat> and, and that sort of thing isn't just by the laying on of hands though that is one of the methods but it provides us a way to believe God and to trust God and walk by the Spirit in these things. So they, they grow in our our reach into areas to where that when we pray and our faith begins to, God's faith begins to be active with our faith in prayer, that it can go beyond just what we can see or hear. It can be spread all across the nations that, that the things that the Spirit is praying are able to be done okay um i just uh, want to continue a little bit here and i probably won't get too much further than this and forgive me for reading this I, I could act like this was my words but i think it's so well said i'd rather do it this way it says the god of the whole earth was we have to understand understanding this it seems like we want these for ourselves for everyday living, but we have to understand that these things are found in correlation to and with the divine purposes of God of all ages that have come before us, all the age to which we were in and those which will go beyond us and 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 come in line with with eternity. Because we're not just talking about our life here in the earth. Um, and when we die and we go to heaven, uh, sometimes we have a mindset that, that limits, um, it limits God and it limits our, our faith. It limits our growth in things. So uh, we think that we're just, well, you know, you, you get a certain age and, and all these things. Well, I just can't do that anymore. Well, there are things that change in the physical body. There are some things that change in the mind. Things will try to hit it to cause it to, to forget, not remember. Uh, but I believe that, that everyone, whether you're the one that's the, in the older category, which I happen to be right now, um, or some of the younger generations that are still coming up, you have to remember you're going to come this way too. So we have to, to live such a, a, a life of love, a love for God and a love for what he loves not just um, in our family line, but who he loves, maybe that we aren't too particularly fond of. But if they're born again, and if they're filled with the Holy Spirit, and they're moving on in, in God, we may not be all at the same place at the same time, but we can't get involved in, in who's better than, or who's not as good as, or, well, I tried that, and it didn't work. It's like, you know, that kind of a sentence that even wants to form in our mouths and say, God, forgive me, forgive me. I'm trying to argue against something. The enemy's trying to get me to side with him that, that your word wasn't true, that faith didn't work. And, you know, forgive me, you know, restore in me the things that, that I have let slip. But also, like I was starting to say, even when you get into those places, and I can tell you the truth, there's some things that happen. And you, you think, whoa, what, what's going on here? Just be careful. When, you, when that hasn't happened to you, be, that's a good place for you to, to practice and have God increase your mercy. Uh, because at some point, we can remember, I can remember things happening to my mother, my grandmother, my sister. Um, and, and sometimes it's, it's through age, sometimes it's through sickness, uh, that hasn't fully been, uh, been healed or went further than it, than it should before it got stopped and all that sort of stuff. But we just need to be careful how we deal with one another, but then personally, 
we need to be careful that we don't have attitudes toward people that then cause them to be the word I guess I would do, be convoluted in and where you you just cause anger to to grow in one another you uh, you make opinions of things um, I just know from some things that have happened over the last few I, I want to say over the last few weeks uh, but maybe even even a little further beyond that um, and some things that happened to me physically yes but but in this time period, God had already began to, to let me look into some things that uh, there were some expectations that were in me because of who he had made me to be from before the foundations of the world. Um, not just from my life here in the earth or my heritage and families or, or the opportunities I've had in, in the realm of, of Christian activity in the church and things of that nature um things that i thought were just past that you know i'd passed my time for that or that i was just lost that because of this that you know you never realize sometimes that, that the enemy just comes in and just seeds some things seed like s-e-e-d-s -E -E seeds some things in you that if you're not careful and you don't deal with them they're going to they're going to produce a crop and we were talking about this in church, I think, the other day. Or it was something that would came up. And, but sometimes we just don't look at it that way. But it's true. Um, the enemy comes in. And so as it says, there's in the Song of Solomon, the thing I remembered always first, it talks about the little foxes that spoil the vine. You know, they come in and, um, um, amid the grape vines. And they're, they're just kind of low to the ground. And they just knock fruit off before it gets can can ripen and things like that well there's there's seeds that are sown sometimes there's seeds in our own minds attitudes about ourselves or other people that when we make comments about the, oh there was that we we're actually cursing ourselves in in a sense if i can use that word there and we sow seeds that the enemy if we don't ask forgiveness for these things then they 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 have things in us that can 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 come up in convoluted ways if i can especially because they're 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 they try to mix with things that are gods and so they're not going to come up right so i'm just saying to us sometimes that it's not a matter no matter what age you are you've got to realize that you you don't take a seat well just because i'm over i'm 80 or i'm 90 or i'm almost 100 well i do you know it's like that kind of an attitude speaks to something else. Recognize those kinds of words. And even if people don't treat you with an honor or what you think is an honor or when they treat you like, well, you should have known better than that. Well, I just, you know, I've told you that, you know, all that kind of stuff. Don't be angry back. This is a good time to let all the seeds of this great Holy Spirit and this great word of God and all the activity of Jesus' life and the love of the Father that's just continually and the Holy Spirit that creates atmospheres. And sometimes when we get in these mad things, we don't realize he's created another place for us to walk into. And we just, you know, drag ourselves through the, through the mud <laughs> uh, rather than taking his hand to just, you know, be lifted a little bit higher to go through that. So... These are just things I, I can see I'm not going to get very far, but sometimes I realize that maybe even some of these things touch our hearts. I know it touches mine, reminds me of some things, but but I say that on two sides. The person who, you know, is older or in a place that maybe they don't even have to be older, but they but they just don't understand. They haven't they haven't come up to places. You know it, Hallelujah. Jesus could have said probably to a lot of those people who were possessed with demons, well, what did you do to let this come in? Or, um, you know, he didn't walk up to that boy that they were carrying him to bury him in, uh, that young man. He just came up and raised him from the dead. Hallelujah. Yes, restored him to his mother, all that stuff. But, but. We don't know what was in that young man that was really maybe meant for God's work just coming up after because Jesus was there. Hallelujah. 
So we don't want to kill someone and we don't want someone, somebody else is just laid low to, to just, to have no kindness, no love, no power, no flowing of the Holy Spirit. And whether or not we can do it out loud or whether we just pray. And then keep ourselves from not getting into a conversation with someone else that sees it one way and and then get in an argument. Just don't get in the conversation. So anyway, hallelujah. <laughs> I was going to go into some, I thought they, well, we may get to them. And if you're not, I'm going to do my best with them and let the Lord just do some works in me. Who knows when it'll come out, but... <laughs> But there was just some some wonderful things to realize that are that are here for us that are not just and it, it's not a matter of how old or how young you are. Um, there's still determination. There's still there's still a fighting, but it's not like a, a physical fight. It's a spiritual believing. It's a realization that things sometimes we haven't given ourselves to them in the word of God or in prayer and if we're in prayer and in the word of God we shouldn't just go there and do what we're used to doing we should go there and, and let God teach us how to go on and so that we can understand what he speaks to us that we don't just hear a word or two and go off and think we have understood it that that we we place what he's got gift that he's given us back before him and say Lord now thank I sanctify this in the name of Jesus. You've told me, heard me. I've had a wonderful time in prayer. I've had a wonderful time before the word of God. A wonderful time in church today. But I know the tendency is there's the little foxes that swallow the vine. There are birds right there trying to snatch that seed before it gets in the ground. And if I don't water it with with prayer and praise and thanksgiving, then it's just laying on top of the ground and just going to be trampled underfoot it's not going to have a good start not have good nourishment <clears throat> from you and from you the solace of the the greatness of your word and the power of the holy spirit and the the emphasis of your blood being able to take away the things in me and in others that might contaminate these things just like i said realizing what power god has when we're praying um, even just acknowledging the word of God to not try to have it to be a scholar, but to realize that God's, you're opening your eyes in me to see. Hallelujah. So anyway, I'm going to close out tonight. I, otherwise I'll get started on something else, but, but I'm just thankful. I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus. I'm thankful that for the authority of the believer. I'm thankful for all these things. And I'm just praying that we'll come into a real relationship where these things aren't subject matters. They're actually the realm in which we enter and we learn and we grow. And, <clears throat> and there's such great harvest every day. Hallelujah. Great harvest from the word of God. Great harvest from prayer. Great harvest from our shopping today or from our, our day at work, whatever, where God is able to just, in these last days, um, break every stronghold. Hallelujah. And raise up. The name of Jesus, raise up the blood of Jesus in such an active form that it's just, it embraces people. That Jesus' name just illuminates darkness. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Thank the Lord for each of you. <laughs> I'm not, I can't say this is the end because I don't know that it is. I'm not sure I got far started, but. I'm just going to thank you for loving God and for being having his kindness and his goodness in you. Don't ever grow tired of him. You know, just like sometimes you have to take time to refresh yourself from all your natural stuff that you do. You need to take time and just don't let something. He is. He is God. 
And the truth of the matter is, beside him, there is no other, not even me. Hallelujah. I don't worship me. I don't worship things. I'm thankful for things. I honor things. But he's the God that doesn't just change our lives, but empowers our lives in places that sometimes we know, sometimes we don't. But hallelujah, his pleasure, his joy in us, his rejoicing in us, it's a real thing that can be experienced, in fact, cried over like I do a lot, but but also just say, I'm not just thankful for it. Lord, I want to walk into the places that you've opened up, that you're opening up, that you see that are ahead, preparing me. May I walk into those places to be prepared for the other places that I stand before you and I stand before the world, and I'll stand before all the activities of evil to declare that you are God, and there is none other. Praise God. Amen.